Now at 4.30, the growing threat of the Omicron coronavirus variant. The World Health Organization sees a very high risk of it spreading across the globe. More than 14 countries, including Canada, now have confirmed cases. The U.S. is taking proactive measures for its eventual arrival here. Travel bans to and from Southern Africa. State leaders are urging people to remain vigilant and get vaccinated. The scientists try to figure out what makes Omicron so dangerous. We don't have enough information about whether it's more transmissible, whether it's going to cause more severe disease, and critically, is it able to escape the effects of the immune of the vaccine? And the CDC is boosting its recommendation that all adults who are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine booster shot to get one now. Also, Dr. Anthony Fauci said it could be at least two weeks before we know more about the dangers of this variant and just how transmissible it is. Here to tell us more is Dr. Anne Ramoyne. She's a professor of epidemiology with the UCLA Fielding School of Public Health. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Now, first, Doctor, what do we know already about this variant? We've heard it has a lot of mutations. What can you tell us? So we are still learning about this variant, but what we do know is that, the, that it appears to be potentially more transmissible, and that is because we're seeing cases really start to spike up in areas where this variant has been detected. Um, it also appears to have a number of mutations, uh, in, including on the spike protein, which is really where the, what attaches to the cells and allows the virus to enter effectively. So there is potential for this, um, this virus, not only just from a um, observational perspective, but also from a perspective of what we're seeing in terms of mutations to be more contagious. Yeah, and a question a lot of people have, is the Omicron variant, is it already in the U.S.? And based on its behavior, could it become dominant like the Delta strain was? Well, we, we don't, we haven't had any cases identified here, but that doesn't mean that it's not here. It's very likely that this this uh, variant is already here and spreading in the United States. You know, I've said this over and over again throughout this pandemic, an infection anywhere is potentially an infection everywhere. And with global travel, um, that's certainly the case. Many countries have already identified uh, this variant, and I think it's just a matter of, of a very short time before we actually see it here. Yeah, we have seen that play out over and over through the course of this pandemic. And doctor, people are worried that the current vaccines may not hold up against this new variant. So should we be worried and what should vaccine makers be doing right now in your opinion? Well, because of the, the mutations that we've seen, there is some concern that this variant might be able to is evade some of the immune responses generated by, by vaccines. But it doesn't mean that these vaccines will go from being effective to being not effective at all. This is going to be likely just some sort of a, a decrease in effectiveness of, of the vaccines but they will still very likely prevent severe disease, hospitalization, and death in the vast majority of people. And so the best thing that we can do, all of us, is to get vaccinated or to get boosted if you're eligible at this point. Uh, so I think that, that it's really important just to remember, it's not a, an all or nothing scenario here. It's just likely that there's, it's gonna take, the vaccines are gonna take a hit with this new variant. And that is certainly going to leave more people vulnerable and make the virus more likely to spread. Yeah, you know, we've been hearing about the new travel restrictions. So will this help keep the variant from getting out of control? So, you know, travel restrictions at this point are probably not going to do much, uh, if anything. The, the, as we just discussed, the variant is likely already here. It may slow down the, the number of infections just on the margins, but I think the, the, the bottom line is it's here. It's probably spreading. You know, the thing is, is that people who can't, the, 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 the travel restrictions are very, very leaky, really. It's, it's for um, non-U.S. citizens and, and non-legal residents. So people who are U.S. citizens or legal residents can still come in from these countries. So it's not like everybody is, is banned from coming into the United States. It's just people that don't fit the criteria to be able to come in. And the virus doesn't care if you have a U.S. passport or not. It just is going to uh, infect people and spread when it can. So I think that the, the more reasonable thing to do is to institute a quarantine and testing procedure for people who do enter the United States, everyone that enters the United States, whether or not they're U.S. citizens or legal residents. And doctor, finally, we saw so many people traveling this Thanksgiving. What about the holidays? Should we be changing our plans because of Omicron? 
Well, you know, listen, we already have a very contagious variant spreading here, the Delta variant. We're likely to see Omicron, which is going to be potentially more contagious. So, um, you know, I think the thing that, that people need to think about is what their own risk is and what they can do to mitigate risk and then make decisions based on that. I think that at this point, it's far too early to say, well, because of this particular variant, I'm going to change my plans. You know, we don't know if this variant, um, what, the, what the real significance of it is, and it's going to take a couple of weeks. But things that you can do really proactively, no matter what is spreading here, is get everybody in the household vaccinated who's not vaccinated, get boosted if you're eligible for, for being boosted, wear a mask in really crowded public settings, especially indoors, take your activities outdoors where you can here in Southern California, that's really easy to do for the most part. Uh, and then, you know, be flexible, be ready to pivot as needed and, and listen to your gut in terms of whether or not you feel comfortable going into certain situations. All right, Dr. Ann Ramoyne, thank you so much for your time and expertise and really breaking this down for us in a really sensible way. Thank you. My pleasure.